Hello YouTube and welcome to the 52nd Focus Friday video which means this is the one year special that I have been preparing for a while. Today we're uh, going to discuss various subjects that have um, that have been subjects of the Focus Friday videos over the past year. Um, but before we get into that, just let me give you a little background. So. I've gotten into reefing in about 2014, which is about five years ago. So before Focus Friday existed, before I had this Red Sea reefer tank, I um, started off learning stuff about reef tanks, hung a lot of uh, a lot of time, hung around on different forums, asking questions, and then when I got comfortable enough, I bought my own tank. Started off small, 60 liter tank, which soon became too small of course, so uh, upgraded it to a 350 liter tank and then in the end it led to this Red Sea Reefer tank. And of course that's not the end of it and more on that at the end of this video. Um, so 2014-2015, my first years as a reefer, I learned an awful lot and at a certain moment I discovered then when, that when I'm uploading videos to YouTube suddenly people started responding to it. So that was kind of fun. So while I only made these videos to post them on the forums uh, that I visited, uh, then suddenly comments came in from YouTube itself, which I thought, hey, that's cool. People are apparently uh, finding the, the videos on YouTube as well. So then in 2016, 2017, I started doing livestock updates about once a month or once every six weeks I tried to post a video, told some stuff about fish that I added or coral and then in the end that led to the Focus Friday series. Um, on the one hand there were quite some people asking questions and I thought let's use the knowledge that I've built up over the past few years and try to explain some stuff while in the same, at the same time showing you my tank. So March 16th, uh, 2018, that was the first Focus Friday video and uh, that turned out to be quite a success. So um, I continue doing that every week and here we are one year later, um, tank is still running, some things have changed, so that's what we're going into today. So I've been getting quite a lot of questions in the last few videos about where is your copper band and that's actually a pretty good question. Usually he's uh, out in the front quite a lot and uh, apparently uh, uh, whenever I'm taking a new video he's uh, uh, sulking around on the back of the tank. Um, but he's there, if you look to the left you will uh, see him appearing in a, in a minute or so. So the copper band is actually the first Focus Friday video that I did. It uh, is also a pretty popular video, uh, over 17,000 views. Ah, there he is. Um, of course he's still alive, as you can see. Uh, he's been in my tank since November 2014, so uh, I'm very happy with, uh, with this fish. It has grown tremendously when I bought it, he was just a few centimeters and now he's uh, a real unit. So very happy with that one and also I think a very worthy uh, fish to have as my first Focus Friday video. And of course I'm very happy and thankful that after a year he's, uh, he's still alive and still uh, very healthy. So the second video, and uh, so let's let's skip ahead a bit. The next few videos were about my reefscape, about how I keep my sand clean. So uh, just a quick update: the reefscape hasn't changed that much over the past year, since I also quite like it a lot. I also get quite a lot of positive feedback from people, from other reef keepers, about my uh, reef structure. So that's why I'm keeping it this way. So as I explained, I have four kind of pillars. So here's one pillar. Here's another pillar, then right here is another kind of pillar, and then here on the left, the fourth one, and they're interconnected with reef branches, reef bones, or other pieces of reef plate. So mostly real reef rock, I think 80% is uh, real reef, and uh, so that's the brand, real reef rock, RRR. And the uh, R. <laughs> and the um, this one right here is a ceramic uh, a ceramic pillar, which uh, which is also uh, 
overgrown with coralline algae, so you will not notice it's a ceramic pillar. Keeping the sand clean uh, is mostly thanks to this guy, which has also been in my tank for, uh, for well, about two years now, I think. And he's a very, very good sand sifting goby. It's a Valenciana sexcutata, if you're wondering. And, um, well, I've done a separate video on him. Um, but these are very good fish to keep your uh, sand nice and white. And also they keep fairly close to the ground, so you won't be bothered with uh, sand ending up on top of your corals. So moving on, I, um, I told some stuff about corals. Um, we'll get into that later, but one that I want to mention specifically again is the zoanthus. Um, on the one hand, they are uh, beautiful corals and they come in various shapes, sizes and colors. As you can see right here, this is the main branch where my zoanthus are. And then here, somewhat to the bottom right, are some other colonies that are still growing. And here as well. Um, but one thing to keep in mind with, uh, with uh, zoanthus, um, or corals that look like zoanthus, which are called polythoa, um, and that can contain toxins. So I've done a, a separate video on that. If you're interested, I'll uh, link to it. I'll try to do that with most uh, stuff, by the way. So I'll add, try to add pop-ups wherever I'm mentioning uh, videos that I've done in the past. So you can easily click on them and uh, refer to them uh, as, you, uh, as you please, if you please. So, what I also discussed quite in the beginning was uh, the fact that I'm uh, the what I'm doing to keep my water parameters in check. Um, so, as you might be aware, I have been using uh, ATI's Essentials, uh, which is a kind of a balling method interpretation. Um, so these five liter jerry cans that are right here still have the stickers on them from the ATI Essentials. Um, I I liked it, but since the uh, the fluids uh, I couldn't dose them one on one. So when I had to dose, for example, 100 milliliters of of uh, Yerikan one, I had to dose 150 milliliters of Yerikan two, and that just didn't work for me. So I switched back to the Balling Classic method, using generic salts, and now I can just dose one on one for each of the Jerry cans again which is a, um, a fairly easy, straightforward method. And I'll also link to that video. So let's, uh, let's uh, get on to the next topic, which is fish. Um, I have discussed various uh, fish that are in my tank, not all of them yet. So there's still topics for new videos. Uh, the ones that I did cover were uh, to start off with uh, the blue star leopard wrasse. The blue star leopard wrasse, I used to have two, a male and a female, and um, well actually the male died, he had a weird bulge on his head, so uh, unfortunately he, uh, he withered away, and while he was uh, sick, the female noticed, I guess, and the female started uh, to transform into a male, so the one that you see right now is actually uh, the one that was a female just months ago which is quite, uh, on the one hand, it's sad that the old one died, but it's also cool to see that this fish transforms into a whole new uh, appearance and it changes sex that way. So that's pretty awesome and also pretty sad because the other one died. Then of course the uh, blue hippo tang, which, is, uh, which I also discussed in my recent tank police video. It's one of those tanks that is very, uh, um, it needs a lot of space, it's a good swimmer and people like their color. I like its color, it's very bright blue and people want it in their tanks. Also thanks to of course uh, the movies uh, Finding Nemo and Finding Dory. Um, still I don't regret this choice. I'm very glad that I bought this fish. and. Uh, it's a very nice addition to, uh, to my tank. 
So moving on from the blue hippo tank, uh, another fish that I uh, don't have in my tank anymore uh, were the dragon face pipefish. Uh, this is actually a, an older video. Um, the dragon face pipefish were amazing fish and I've had them for quite a long time until unfortunately one day I thought it was a good idea to add a decorator crab to my tank and that was perhaps the worst decision I've made in my whole reefing career. It was a very aggressive crab which I did not anticipate. Uh, when I started looking for information on it uh, I found information that it, they could be real bullies and um, so that's one of the cases where I very much regret buying that crab especially since it uh, it grabbed my dragon face pipe fish and uh, well it killed them both in one night and uh, of course I took the decorator crab out the next day but that was already too late so that's something I still regret um, I would like to get some dragon face pipe fish I also know that they are quite easy or not not quite easy to keep they need to get uh, a lot of food and um, well, they're pretty hard to keep actually, so I'm, I'm not doing that anymore. At least not for the moment. Other fish that I've covered are the, uh, the clownfish, of course, which are still happy in their euphilia. I gave them a new euphilia, which is actually still pretty small, but they already started to show interest in it, so that's, uh, that's cool to see. Another fish that I covered is this... Uh, Spotted drum, the Equatus punctatus, which in my opinion is still one of the nicer fish that I have. I like the copper band better, but this one is a little bit more special. It's pretty good with the people ask, uh, uh, is it not harassing your, uh, your uh, cleaner shrimp? But it's actually doing pretty great. Uh, it's not attacking them and it even lets, uh, lets them clean it. So, hmm. He's doing fine. Then the mandarins, of course. The female is right here. Uh, unfortunately, the ruby red dragonets that I had have also perished. I'm not sure how or why, especially since these uh, blue green ones are doing well. They're doing well. Um, so it, it was a big surprise to me that the uh, the red ones uh, died, and it's pretty sad. But yeah, then then again. Nothing else much I could do about it since they just disappeared on me. So I'm not sure. They might have died from starvation. They might have been attacked by another fish. I can't tell for sure. Then the fox face. The video about the fox face is actually a different one than this one. Which you will obviously see since this one is uh, pretty small. And the other one was pretty huge. So uh, this is actually my fourth fox face already. Up until now, since my tank is not that large, uh, I had to move them out to a larger tank every time they grew to about 12 to 15 centimeters. You can just see when they grow that big that they uh, don't have enough swimming space, personal space anymore. And you will see them uh, not very happy. So that's, uh, that's why I, uh, this fourth fox face is in my tank. They are very good algae eaters, that's why I... Uh, I have it in my tank. I will notice straight away when I lose my fox face, or when I move my fox face, I'm not adding a new one, then within weeks nuisance algae will start to show up and uh, I just add a new one and it uh, all magically disappears again. So it's doing its job very well. And then the last, last and latest addition to the tank um, is the Regal Angelfish which is uh, right here. It's a pretty shy fish, which I didn't really anticipate. So maybe it's because he's still pretty small. And uh, when he grows larger, he will uh, be at the front of the tank a little more. But right now he's still, he's visible, but he's a little bit shy, as you can see. One of those fish that I also considered for a very long time, especially since they are known to uh, like sponges, which is not really an issue, but also uh, large polyp stony corals, which is kind of an issue. Then again, I've decided that uh, there's enough corals in my tank and that I would grant him whatever coral he, uh, he'd start nipping on. 
and uh, so far that's worked out great. So the Regal Angel fish, one of the most beautiful fish, my personal opinion, that you can keep in a reef tank. So we're already, uh, what is it, 15 minutes underway. I still have quite some topics to cover, so this will be a long one. Um, corals, I'll try to keep that uh, subject a little bit uh, uh, shorter. We've discussed uh, polyp expansion, extension, extension is the right word to use, uh, which varies from uh, 10 to 15 centimeters, like this Goniopora, to just bare millimeters when you're considering Gorgonians, like this yellow one, or other short polyp stony corals, like this Milipora, or even, not even a millimeter, when it's considering, for example, Montipora which are right here, which have very, very small polyps. So one topic that I've also discussed is coral bleaching. Coral bleaching is actually an issue that pops up now and now and again. Same, uh, same uh, for, for uh, well, this, this specific time, since uh, some of my mushroom corals which are also the next subject, are started to bleach, are starting to bleach. I'll show you one right here. So somehow out of this group of various Rhodactis, uh, one of them has decided to start bleaching. Uh, I can't tell why. It's really a mystery to me because the other ones, as you can see, are doing, well, pretty okay. And then the same goes for uh, some other Rhodactis that are on the back of the tank, right here, as you can see, next to the green star polyp. These are also bleaching quite severely, and I'm not sure why. So this is the way they are supposed to look. They're even a little bit light as well, but this is the way they, are, they look when they're healthy. And obviously the ones in the back are uh, are not. So, um, two specific corals that I've uh, covered as well are Gorgonians and Goniopora's. So Gorgonians are still one of my favorite corals. Um, they're nice because they add some uh, some uh, some vertical uh, movement in your tank. They uh, often grow upwards instead of to the sides. Like for example with this huge Gorgonian, but also this one, which looks quite similar, but it's a different species. And of course the yellow one, the rusty Gorgonian, which I've shown you before. Goniopora are also uh, um, one of my favorite corals, um, especially since they, uh, they extend their polyps very beautifully. As you can see with this green yellow one, not sure what the color is, it's more green than yellow. This red one, and the red one has been uh, in my tank for quite a long time. It has grown from a frag. The frag was about as big as the two frags above it, so the green ones. Then there's the purple one, which is a short polyped Goniopora, and there's the pink one, which is actually a little bit, little bit over set, no, not oversaturated, but there's too much light. But you can get a general view of its color. So moving on from corals to somewhat more generic subjects that we've covered over the past year, there are uh, power outages. So how to handle power outages, and one of those uh, is, uh, one of the solutions is to add a backup battery to your tank. You can also use a generator. But then again, when you're not at home, when the power outage occurs, you have to turn it on manually. And I found that using a backup battery like this one right here, it's a very useful and effective way, also very cost effective, of uh, giving that bit of juice to your uh, circulation pumps um, whenever there's a power outage. It has saved me twice or three times already in the past year. So I'm actually very happy that I got this one and uh, it's connected to the gyre so it uh, keeps going when the power goes out. 
Another important topic is uh, the temperature in your tank. Um, I'm using a, a Teco TK500, which is a combination of a chiller and a heater. So it has a heater inside as well, and it keeps the tank at around 25 to 26 degrees uh, Celsius. And um, I found that this is a very good chiller. I've been using it for uh, a little over two years now, and it uh, hasn't failed me since. So it keeps the temperature in your tank stable. And that's very important for corals and fish, uh, but since they uh, appreciate stable water parameters and water conditions. A topic we also discussed was um, managing your uh, NO3, your nitrates and your phosphates, your PO4. Um, I've, um, I'm actually dosing um, something to uh, to prevent that and that's uh, that used to be Red Sea's NO3 PO4X which the bottle is still here but at the moment I'm using a, a mix of uh, vinegar white vinegar and uh, vodka so it's the 50-50 mix and I'm I'm putting it in this bottle that's why the bottle is still here but now right now so it's a, a vodka vinegar mix which is actually basically quite, not exactly the same, but it has the same function as uh, the Red Sea product. Also, another thing I'm doing to, uh, to reduce nitrates and phosphates is um, I'm using a reactor with Roafos inside, that's specifically for phosphates. It's binding phosphates and it's doing a really nice job, so I'm keeping it at around 0 0.1 to 0 0.2, which is my target value. My NO3 target value is around 10 to 15, which is also being maintained. And also that's thanks to this, uh, this algae. These are both Caulerpa species. Uh, one is Toxifolia and the other one I forgot. Um, and I'm using a uh, 18 watts LED light, as you can see right here, to uh, keep them alive and growing. And it's actually doing a very nice job since these algae are growing uh, quite fast. And in growing, they absorb the nitrates in your water. So that's the way it removes nitrates from your water. I'll do a separate video review on this uh, light somewhere in the next period, I think next month, because uh, I found that it's a very effective light. So the sump in general is also a subject of, uh, I've discussed before. The Red Sea sump uh, is still uh, one of my favorite sumps. Um, it's, I think they have upgraded a few times uh, as they upgraded the tanks. So if you buy a Red Sea reefer now, the sump will look uh, slightly different than this one. Uh, but I still just, yeah, I really like this one. Um, it's very versatile because it has a one big uh, one big area where you can put the things you uh, you want, and then of course the ability to run uh, filter floss or something else in a canister right here. The automatic top off, which is a mechanical system, which also works really well. As you can see right here, it's a float valve, and then a small area for your uh, return pumps which is right here. So a very, pretty simple but very effective uh, sump that uh, Red Sea is uh, providing with their uh, reefers. So one of the last subjects that I wanted to cover, which we've uh, discussed over the past year, is water clarity. Uh, water clarity is very important to me since uh, having particles in your water will make your tank look dirty. And um, so I'm using a couple of different things. One of them is uh, the filter floss, which I've shown you before, which is a very nice way of uh, um, removing dirt from your water. Then I'm also using a UVC unit, which is a 36 watts UVC light from JBL, a JBL, Aqua Crystal or Pro Crystal, if you look, want to look for it and then the addition of um, 
uh, carbon, which is right in between here. So there's a bag of carbon uh, in between these two pieces of glass. So those are the main subjects that I wanted to discuss with you today um, based on the videos of the past year. I already anticipated that it would take a little longer than 10 minutes but we're already approaching the 30 minute mark. So I'll try to keep it within that. Um, one last subject that I wanted to cover is the future. If you've seen my most recent videos you could have heard me talking about the, uh, the option of moving houses. So that's becoming a little more concrete as we speak. So there's a very good possibility that uh, we will be uh, moving houses uh, somewhere this year. And of course, with moving houses, there's also the question what to do with the tank. I've uh, been considering a lot of options, buying a smaller tank, buying a bigger tank, just stopping for the moment and uh, see where uh, the new house leads us and if and when I will uh, um, have the desire to start a new tank but I've made my decision I'm going to uh, uh, to buy a, a bigger tank so I will continue I won't stop reefing I wasn't ever going to stop reefing by the way because I really love this hobby um, so the idea is to uh, to have a bigger tank in the future I'm still debating uh, what kind of tank if it will be a custom-made tank or if it will be a, a, a bigger pre-built tank like the Red Sea Reefer 750. I'm considering even going bigger than 750. Um, my ideal tank I think would be around 2 meters by 80 centimeters by 80 centimeters or something in that region. So um, I'm uh, still thinking about the details, still thinking about how I'm going to facilitate this move but the decision has been uh, made uh, in my head and I'm slowly working out the details so uh, that way I will be able to provide my fish with a larger tank uh, and that's also one of the main motivators uh, why I'm, uh, I'm pursuing this option since I, uh, well, I'm pretty attached to my fish and I want to give them uh, good conditions to live in I'm seeing that my copper band is uh, reaching, uh, of course it's, it's already grown pretty large so I don't expect it to grow much larger but then again a somewhat larger tank would suit him also the spotted drum which is growing uh, well steadily and the blue hippo tank which uh, has uh, also grown considerably over the past six to seven months and uh, uh, yeah I want to accommodate a good nice and large tank for them so uh, not sure yet when we're going to move and um, uh, because we're still in the process of, uh, of buying a new house um, but when I have more info on that uh, I'll share it with you guys and uh, well the takeaway is uh, I'm going to continue my videos I'm going to continue reefing um, and I hope to have an, uh, a great new year together with you guys um, I hope you enjoyed this video I realize it's been a long one, so I hope you have been uh, able to uh, to hang on. Um, I won't add any... Uh, uh, well, That's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next week. Have a nice weekend for now. Bye-bye.